Well, cheers. Cheers. Best coffee I've ever had. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, Welcome to Seattle. I'm not just saying that because we're on camera. I mean, this is fantastic. Not just saying that because we bought it for you? Mm -mm. Good. No, sir. Um, so, Sharp Objects, I mean, just seeing the first episode, it, it, the way it grips you and messes with your mind yeah. in so many ways, just that the flashing back, but then it's not flashing back because it's right there in the present. It's so well done. Yeah. When you're on set and you're going through all of that and, and knowing that this is happening, how do you, how do you navigate around that storyline? Well, you, you know, the, uh, the Bible uh, of the show, the scripts really tell you everything, but, but you never know exactly what Jean-Marc, the director's thinking. His, his visual sense is, is uh, it's, it's incredible, it's super creative, always finding stuff in the moment. Um, if we were shooting in here, he would fall in love with that machine and then start kind of shooting around it and, and then you'd watch the show and all of a sudden as we were talking, there would be all make sense. shots of this machine and shots of the coffee and then back to us. So he's got an incredible visual style. Um, that when, takes an incredible amount of trust for you as absolutely, an actor. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, when you have someone like that, it, 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 you're very lucky because you can kind of sit back and do your job and, and know that he's doing his and taking care of you. So on one hand, you've got Jean Marc over here as the director, but then you're also going face to face with a friend, Amy Adams. Yeah, yeah. Which is like, it's like, I'm not a good tennis player, but I'll use the analogy <laughs> of like playing tennis with uh, Venus. You know, I mean, it's like. It, you're gonna, I would imagine you'd play better tennis with her. Uh, Amy makes you look better, she makes you sound better, she makes you feel better. She's just an incredible player. I, she really is, I've said this before, she's like the Babe Ruth mm. of, uh, of actors. Um, she kind of points to where she wants to hit it and, and she hits it there. Do you think there's anything she can't do? No. Yeah. And I'd like to see her do a comedy because she's extremely funny. Um, and she had us laughing a lot uh, between takes, which is, with this kind of material, which is super dark, super complicated, especially for her playing a really, you know, um, a lot of demons, a lot of skeletons mm -hmm. in the closet for her. So to, to laugh between takes was uh, mandatory. She, uh, she really, obviously she takes every role on with an incredible amount of diligence and, and determination. This though, it, it just in seeing the first episode really seems like this is her baby. Yeah, yeah, I mean she is one of the producers on the show. Um, it's a, I think a first for her doing that. And so she was, you know, not only 100% there as an actress, but she was taking care of us, making sure we, had, we were being taken care of. Uh, she was concerned about the schedule, the stand-ins, the, um, you know, she bought an ice cream truck on a hot summer day in Atlanta to make sure we all cooled off. And then on top of it, uh, delivering what I think is one of her finest performances. So yeah, I, I think overall uh, it, was, it was her baby. So get us up to speed, kind of give your description of okay. what is this show all about and, and your role as the detective in it. Yeah, so Sharp Objects uh, is about a reporter Camille Preaker, played by Amy Adams, who has to return to her small hometown to investigate a possible serial killer. Um, why she's there, she's, she's forced to confront uh, the demons of her past. Uh, I play uh, Detective Richard Willis. I'm the big city detective that comes and uh, tries to help out. I'm not very welcome in the town. I butt heads with the uh, local chief of police. And Amy's character and mine, we start to work together, share information, and we develop a complicated relationship. The first <laughs> scene where you guys are together, though, is a search party. Yeah. Out, out in the woods, and you know, here you've got this community getting together to, to try to find a body or try to find somebody who's missing. Yeah. Uh, and and there's, a, there's a lot of tension there, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, there's a, well, there's tension all throughout the story of, you know, there's a, um, killing and uh, a child missing and uh, another child that's murdered. So there's an automatic, uh, horrific incident. And um, there's a responsibility to uh, both her character and mine to, and the chief of police and 
you know, to crack this case, to figure out what's going on, to make sure nothing else bad happens. So there's a frustration and tension built into it, and then there's this um, automatic dynamic between her and I, an attraction, um, a need for communication. The town isn't very um, nice to me, um, and there's not many people to talk to. There's a loneliness to, to my character, and an out-of-town quality that you know, just doesn't fit in. So he, he gloms on to Amy, uh, and then that develops into uh, uh, something you know, exciting. You also get to work with a number of other actors. Let's let's hear about some of Patricia your Patricia Clarkson yeah. is incredible in this. Matt Craven, Elizabeth Perkins. I mean, the cast is phenomenal uh, across the board. Everybody that came in, it was like acting school for me. Um, when you're acting with someone like Amy or or Patty, you just, like I said before, you you can't help to to grow. You know. What's it like getting from the point of referring to someone as Patricia Clarkson and then you get to call him Patty? It's kind of like the Robert De Niro and you call him Bobby, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. You're there. Yeah, I'm there. I made it. I get to call Patricia Patty. Well, Patty and I, <laughs> we did Vicky Cristina Barcelona together. And so we've known each other for quite a while. She's friends with my wife and I. And, uh, yeah, and Amy and I did Julia and Julia together. That, that, that kind of shorthand with, Anybody you're collaborating with, it's priceless, really, because you end up getting to a place uh, that you may not have gotten to if if you were just meeting them on the first day and say, "Hey, you're you know, jump in." You know, you already have this built-in chemistry, this built-in love and trust. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was lucky to join forces with them again. You told a great story uh, last night at the big Seattle screening that we had of a moment with Patricia. Talk about that moment and, and really what she brought to the scene. Yeah, so we were, we, she had a, a bunch of dialogue. I didn't have much to say. And uh, we, Jean-Marc Vallée doesn't rehearse much and there's no marks on the ground, there's no lighting. And um, she said to me, they said rolling, they said sound speed. And she said, I don't know what's gonna happen. And I said to her, let's walk the tightrope. And she turned to me and said, let's fail. <laughs> let's fail, which is, one of the great acting lessons uh, you could ever get. Yeah. You know, jump in and, and fail and yeah. see what happens. And she was incredible. It was no failing. Um, she and did that really it. freed you up for the scene? It freed me up. It freed her up. And uh, she was fantastic. You know, one, one of the great, great acting lessons. Fail. Keep failing. How do you describe it to people of how it unfolds without, of course, giving it away? Oh, God. Okay. How does it unfold? Um, it gets more and more tense as it goes. It gets more and more uh, heated between characters, and, and the layers keep peeling back of this, of this town. You start to learn more about the dysfunction, where the dysfunction was born, and um, I, I think it's, it's just electric. I mean, it's one of the, I'm so proud to be a part of the show. You go around and you publicize all this stuff, and a lot of times, I've been fortunate enough to like a bunch of the stuff I've done. Uh, this is uh, through the roof. I, I, I can't stop saying how, uh, how fortunate I am to be a part of it. I mean, it's just, it's a show that you just, you know, I'm glad you can't binge watch it because I think television where you can, uh, you have to wait for it is mm -hmm. also exciting. Um, but you're gonna you're gonna be dying to know what happens. It really picks up steam, and um, and Amy Adams and Patty Clarkson or uh, Patty are uh, just they're phenomenal. What do, we, what do we call Amy for shorthand? I don't know. You call her, do you have a nickname for? Her? I don't. Aim. Aim. Yeah. Double A. Double A. Yeah. Double A is good. Maybe A A for her a -A. in this role of hers. She's this could be drinking a, -A. a lot of Evian. Yeah. 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 A lot of O'Doul's in this one. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was going to ask you about that. In, in the, the show, her character consumes a lot of vodka. Yeah. Um, I, I know that wasn't real vodka because she'd never be able to get through the show. But no. was she exceptionally hydrated during this whole filming? <laughs> we, we drank a lot of that terrible O'Doul's and, you know, makes you really gassy and you're constantly burping and you have a stomach ache. And, uh, 
But yeah, she's a good actress, you know, because um, uh, she certainly looks a mess uh, in a lot of scenes that I had with her. She certainly looks like she'd, had, you know, put back a few. But no, it was, you know, it was either, you know, water or duels or whatever uh, food coloring they put in it. You know, she's a great actress. You know, you talked about binge watching and how that's really changed things, but with HBO, it's still appointment television, uh, and it's something to look forward to, that anticipation. For you, though, what's it like being a part and knowing you have HBO at your back? Well, they're really nice folks to work for. They really take care of uh, the people that work for them. They, um, look, that's, you know, they are the kings and queens of, of, of television. I mean, they've been doing this for a while. Um, that's why so many writers and actors and directors, you know, are clamoring to work with them. They, they're very supportive of their material, um, and they uh, they choose really sophisticated, character-driven stories that unfortunately um, aren't as popular in the movies. So, um, for a lot of my friends and I, we go, hey, you know, if you want to do the stuff that made you want to be an actor in the first place, go work with HBO. So this show, it, it's, 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 I keep saying it's like Big Little Lies meets True Detective. Yeah. Um, it's a character driven piece under the umbrella of a gothic thriller. And it, so it, it, it gives you everything. It gives you that excitement. It gives you that scare. It gives you that whodunit. But when you get inside of it, there's pain and heartbreak and character and, um, and people, which uh, I know that that's what I want to watch. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Great chatting, man. You too, man. Thank you. Thank you for this coffee. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. <laughs> Seattle.